a very good evening uh, my name is kathy gattani and i am a part of the current cohort of masters union batch of 2022 i've had a great privilege of being a student i will be able to say this for the rest of my life that i have been a student of thomas kurvilla sir so this session is a great opportunity for me as uh, what i've learned and will be learning from him in the near future so to give you a brief as to who he is if at all you didn't have the time to go through linkedin and see how uh, great of a consultant sir is uh, Tom, mr thomas kurvilla sir is a member of the global board of arthur d little which is one of the oldest consulting firm uh, right from 1886 as uh, sir had mentioned uh, it is responsible uh, sir himself is responsible for arthur d little's operations in the middle east he has a uh, plethora of experience at this particular firm itself he has been there for more than 20 years now and uh, he is also a part time faculty at various colleges such as the iims and masters union itself and takes programs on strategy and consultant uh, management consulting so uh, he i i would like to believe from his brief uh, intro that he absolutely loves engaging with young crowd and aspirants so uh, not only that he takes he is a pr prevalent speaker at conferences or in corporate areas international business strategies turning around management corporate valuations and all these things his vast experience has uh, led him at varied uh, public sector organizations engagements and digital transformations across industries he is also at the board of various family conglomerates of the middle east now uh, he uh, did his qualification and education from india itself he is a bachelor's he has a bachelor's degree in electrical and electronical engineering from kerala not only that an mba from melbourne university uh, in australia and uh, how can a consultant just be a consultant so uh, it is with great privilege that i can share with you all that he was also selected uh, as a pilot officer with the indian air force so it it is uh, our great privilege to have you here sir uh, and without wasting much of the time i would like to uh, introduce you to our uh, aspirants at masters union or various other b schools and uh, be a part of this conversation so the topic today that uh, sir would be taking is how can you think like a consultant now that is that is such a great uh, choice of words because a few of my questions would also be on the lines of what is that knack what is that skill to be able to have a structured thinking which is required by consulting so i would not take much of uh, the time and i will hand it over to you thomas sir thanks a lot for being here thank, thank you me. very much uh, uh, I, i hope you can hear me quite well amazing introduction these intro yeah these introductions uh, put a lot of pressure on the person listening to this and set some very high expectations the topic is very interesting and let me start by giving an input on how to behave and think like a good a very good consultant is to keep quiet and listen to somebody which is a quality that most of the consultants lack most of the consultants make an assumption that they do know almost everything and they can speak for one hour and they know what the audience wants to listen to and that is not correct and hence just as i expect a very good consultant to think and behave instead of me speaking i should be reacting and listening to the participants on what they want to hear and i will respond to them instead of assuming that i know what you want me to talk about which is what normally consultants do and i think it is wrong so that is how i want to start the session it means that i will not be speaking a lot i will be answering questions i believe that is what everybody is looking forward to as well but it also means that the participants need to ask questions instead of me speaking because i may end up speaking uh, something that they may not be keen to uh, listen to right and that is I, i'm i'm not joking i'm quite serious uh, i'm quite serious about this because the the behavior of a consultant in general is not something that i believe uh, is the right behavior of consultants they they start 
assuming that they know everything just because somebody came to them and they keep assuming they know the problem, they know the solution, they keep talking, they don't listen to people. And if you don't listen to the problem, they don't listen to the request, you are not going to address it. You are just going to tell them what you think is important, which may be completely out of what is required. Yeah. Very true. So, sir, I'll still take the questions after a few minutes, but until then, because that is something that everybody wants to know. Like, it is very important, and that would also form a part of uh, a few questions that would come in. Like, a couple of them has already come in, wherein Bhavesh has been asking that, uh, what are the attributes that a cons consultant should have, and which would also comprise when you are uh, taking this session on how to think like a consultant. The first couple of questions of what is a day-to-day -day work like? How do you make sure if you are meant for it? So I think uh, your introduction and your topic for the session would also comprise of similar things. So you should just begin with. Uh, See, when you talk about what are the qualities required for a consultant, there are some very basic qualities that are required. And there are a set of qualities that I think people don't assume, right? If it was a face-to-face -face session, I would have wanted to listen to the participants telling me what do they think are the important qualities for a consultant. I don't know whether we can, the, the arrangement allows people to start sharing that or you can type in the chat on what do you think are the good qualities of a consultant. And then I will give you some inputs on whether those are the most important qualities of a consultant versus whether you're missing something. So let me start reading what I'm seeing. Problem solving skills, very good. This is a very, very important quality of a consultant. Resilience, very good. Empathy, very good. Uh, he should be able to listen, very good. Unbiased, very good. Good communication skills, excellent, correct. What else? All the answers that you are giving, being structured. Now you are getting a bit more uh, closer to what are the more fundamental requirements of a consultant, right? Normally people think about, I need to be intelligent. I need to be analytically very strong. I need to be very structured in my thinking. All of that are very, very important, but these are very basic qualities required to be a good consultant right now. The fundamental requirements of a consultant really contradicts. It is a contradiction. And let me explain to you what I mean by saying that it is a contradiction. For you to be a good consultant, what is the definition of a consultant? The consultant, the definition of a consultant is not to give expert advice. People assume that everybody comes for an expert advice. No. A consultant helps a person to go through a structured process, get convinced of a decision and take a decision because you cannot do it for somebody else. The person who is coming to you for an advice has to get convinced of the advice and the person has to implement the decision. That means you're helping somebody to take a decision instead of giving an expert advice and instructing them to do it. Let us not get into regular concept. Let us talk about a conversation between you and your parents, for example, right? Every day-to-day -day discussion, depending on the type of discussion, it can be an instruction or it can be a consulting engagement, right? Let us say your parents are telling you that, okay, I want you to go to the master's union for an MBA course. That is an instruction. That is not a consulting uh, setup. The consulting setup is you and your parents sit together and look at what are the various options for you to go for an MBA. You look at the various schools, what are the advantages, what are the disadvantages, you give a criteria, rate them, then you jointly take a decision. That is more a consulting engagement. You see the difference between a consulting discussion and a discussion in which it is just an expert opinion, expert advice, right now. People normally get selected as consultants if you are academically quite strong, you are quite intelligent. They tend to select people who have been toppers during their education, technically. And uh, to put it very bluntly, people who are extremely successful in the schools, in the colleges, have been coming topper in their class, they tend to be at least internally arrogant, internally. Whether you show it or not, it's a separate issue. Some people show it, 
Some people don't show it. But when I use the word arrogant, it may sound negative, but let me put it in a slightly different context. Let us say you are going to do a consulting for Air India. Air India is going to be taken over by uh, Tata Airlines and you're doing a consulting for them. If you need to stand in front of the board of Air India and tell them what to do or consult with them, you need to believe that you're very good. You need to believe that you are one of the best persons who is capable to give this advice. You need to believe that by talking to them, they will be able to take a very good decision. What else is the definition of arrogant? What, what, do, what, what do you mean by an arrogant person? That I'm the best. But you, if you don't have that feeling, you cannot go and talk, tell people that, let me explain to you how to take a decision. You see? So you're quite arrogant. The moment you're, you're, you're becoming arrogant, you do not listen to the other person. Why? Because you're making a judgment that I am better off between the people. It has been proven in your educational days because your parents or your school or your classmates or even the school gives you grades, class topper, top 5%, top 15%. So you have suddenly elevated yourself and you start not relating to the person who is trying to get help from you. You see, so there is already a contradiction in the behavior that is required by a consultant in which you need to really be associated with the people whom, to whom you're providing advice versus not being arrogant, but at the same time being very, very confident about the recommendations and the inputs that you're going to give. You see, and it is quite, uh, it's quite rare and it, it needs a lot of training for people to start behaving in a way that I'm not positioning myself as a very intelligent, superior person I'm more helping somebody to take a decision and the understanding and the knowledge of the situation is more with the person to whom I'm going to provide the help. You see that switch has to happen, right? And normally people who are doing extremely well are not very good team players. They are not, they are not, right? I'm sorry to give uh, such inputs. I don't want people to look at it um, bad or negative. These are just, realities when and, and you cannot even blame them because when somebody wants to become a team player it is it, it is because there's an expectation that when i work in a team i will get a lot of inputs from the team but if you are the team player if you are the class topper and everybody has told you you are the best you are already being elevated and hence you don't feel the necessity to get inputs from others because everybody has told you thomas you are the most intelligent person. You are the best. You got selected into consulting. In your class, many people did not clear all these discussions. You are the most intelligent person. Why will you work as a team? You see what I'm saying? So, But these are the worst characteristics to be a consultant. And a smart, individual, egoistic person is by far, by far the worst consultant. Let me again give you some more examples. If you look at very smart, intelligent people making a presentation to you in your class, imagine a situation in which I'm a consultant, I'm making a presentation to a client, and I found that in my slide, there is a mistake, okay? And the audience is not realizing that there is a mistake on the slide. How many of us will proactively tell them that the slide that I'm displaying has a mistake? And even if you have not identified it, I have identified that. And I'm telling you that I made a mistake. 95% of the people don't do this. 95% of the people don't do this. If, they, if you find a mistake while you are making a presentation in a consulting engagement, you first start praying so that the client doesn't find that out. And you are happy to make the presentation and finish the presentation. But look at how much your ego 
has spoiled your behavior. A client has paid you crores and crores of rupees for them to give you a recommendation, right? And you are happy to get away by may, even though you made a mistake and giving a wrong recommendation to the client just because of your ego. You, you see where I'm coming from, right? So the, the qualities of a consultant, while we talk about being very intelligent, smart, very structured in communication, that these are very, very basic qualities. The most important quality is capability to sincerely listen to other people and appreciate their opinions versus just listening to them for the sake of listening. Appreciate people when are contradicting your views and recommendations very open towards admitting mistakes, very open towards positive response to people who are trying to tell you something, right? These are the much better qualities because if you don't have that disposition in which people are willing to tell you a few things, you will not be getting the various inputs, you will not be correcting uh, your own uh, thinking, and you will not be coming up with the right recommendations for your clients. You see what I'm saying? Which is normally not the case with people that come into consulting. One of the questions that had come up is, how should one prepare if he or she would be joining a B school in June? this year and aspires to be a consultant like what are those things whether it is a 16 month program or a two year program what are those things that they can do in these uh, coming years that they are at their respective colleges uh, that help them become a better consultant or uh, increase their chances of actually becoming a consultant i don't know whether all of you know there are something called case studies right the best way to prepare for these type of careers is to go to case studies discussing cases in a very structured fashion in a group of people there is no other training other than discussing real situations trying to come up with solutions and coming up with a very systematic structured way to identify the issue let us first of all agree on what is the issue right and then collecting information analyzing the information coming up with a recommendation with a group of people, right? And the most important component is trying to align to a recommendation with a group of intelligent people where the recommendations will tend to disagree with each other. Because, see, the, 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 all of us need to understand for business situations, there is no right or wrong answer. If there is a right or a wrong answer, every airlines will have one strategy, every bank will have a strategy. So it is a group of people trying to come up with a recommendation. It is your own analysis and judgment that concludes whether it is right or wrong. It is more about getting a group of people towards aligned towards moving forward. So you are, if you're if you're able to work with a group of people on identifying and resolving a solution and getting people to work with you, convincing a group of people to work with you and work towards a solution, you're already on the track towards thinking like a consultant, right? And there is no, there is nothing else other than uh, going through discussions, analysis, coming up with the recommendations. But if you want to get into subjects that you need to read, in, again, it may be a bit contradictory to what people may be thinking. Economics is very good. Yeah, there is no subject which is as fundamental as economics, right? Which, which gets into economic factors, economic development factors, understanding why some nations are doing well, not doing well, what are the economic drivers of things. So economics is actually a very good subject to, to, uh, to study. Uh, understanding what is happening in the business world, reading a lot of business magazines, news reading is extremely very good. It's not about learning something and just uh, going through some courses. It is about getting more and more knowledgeable about what is happening. People who read a lot, synthesize a lot, discusses uh, current matters with others, 
tend to be very good consultants, right? The people who are consultants are not the people who tend to be much more uh, heavier on brain power and analytical skills. These are people who are well read, uh, interested in very diverse topics, understanding the linkages between the various topics that leads to particular situations. And hence, economics is a very, very good subject for you to understand and getting very deep into economics, uh, valuation, all of that contributes towards the thinking like a consultant, by the way. Yeah. I will not suggest that there are courses to be done to become a consultant. It's not uh, uh, unless you are going to be a consultant in marketing or a consultant in process redesign, then there are specific topics uh, that you may want to read up. Otherwise, it is general knowledge about things and economics will be something which is very, very good in my view. Yeah. Pretty much something that you have been guiding us in the classes as well. At least I can vouch for it. Right. The more perspectives that come in, the more you learn about different perspectives. It has always exactly. been your take. Right? Exactly. See, let me give you again a few inputs, right? See, I, I don't want to, it may sound very sensitive, right? And this also comes in because of a of lot of traveling that I have done in the part of doing consulting, right? All of us have, a, if you look at a lot of the issues that is happening in the world today, right? There are cultural differences, there are religious aspects. Uh, people always tend to think that my thinking is correct and the opposing thinking is wrong. That is, that is generally... And that is fundamentally against consulting. You cannot, unless you start appreciating the viewpoint of the other person, you will not be able to do consulting, right? And I, I, I don't, it may sound very sensitive. If you actually take some of the cultural values or some of the religious philosophies, right? If you dig deep into one or some of the religious principles, it is just a way of life in the geography where the religion originated. I don't know whether I'm, it, it's sounding very, very, uh, very critical. What I'm trying to say is there is always a logic of why something is being done. There is always a logic. And when you're trying to correct something, you need to understand why it happened in the very first place. Because when it happened in the beginning, it was always right. Right. For example, again, I, I, it may be sensitive, but let me get it across. In Saudi Arabia, you can marry, you can have four wives at the same time. Right. People will say, Thomas, this is ridiculous. This is not OK. Right. Women are not allowed to drive. Right. You cannot get into a discussion in Saudi Arabia and tell them women should start driving tomorrow morning because I am an expert. I have lived in Germany and UK and India everywhere women are driving and hence women should be allowed to drive. That is how a consultant behaves. That's not the right way to do it. You really need to understand why is that in Saudi Arabia, women were not allowed to drive. And there were genuine, genuine reasons hundreds or thousand years back, not, not thousand years back, uh, because driving was not there. But for some, some of the behaviors of people, there are fundamental reasons why something is happening. So you need to understand and appreciate the logic of why something is happening and you may have a difference of opinion about that but still you need to understand the rationale of why something is happening and then only you can start correcting correcting it you know so the, the fundamental requirement is that when you see something is wrong and when you think that you need to correct something you need to understand why that something it is wrong today was correct at a particular point of time. That is the right way to do consulting and correct something. You need to get to the root of why is it that this thing existed and what was the right rationale by which people were doing something and now I need to um, correct it. Like for example, let us talk about Air India. People will say, oh, now I need to fire all the people from Air India. That is not consulting. You need to start understanding why is that in Air India when it's it was started as a public sector entity? Why is that people job security was given? Why was it very difficult to fire people? Right. I'm not saying that you should not fire people, but you should not just come and say, I'm consulting to Air India. I want to fire all of them who are not working well. That is not correct. You need to go and understand why it is the case. And then only you can get into the recommendations. Right. So this is not about intelligence. It's more about your quality, empathy, appreciation of what is happening versus saying that you are wrong and I am right and I am telling you what to do. That is a completely wrong philosophy to do consulting, right? 
So my one line takeaway would be, if you want to be a consultant, you really need to be emotionally, uh, you should have a good EQ, if nothing else. You need to have a very good EQ. You need to appreciate and agree that people that you are consulting for are more knowledgeable, more intelligent than you. You are more helping them to, you know, get out their thinking. You are just facilitating their thinking process. You are just helping them take a decision. You should never come in with a superiority thinking with the person that you're talking to, right? Let me get a bit more deeper into the, the topic. Let us say you want to consult with, as a consultant, you want to talk to um, Ambani, right? When does a consulting uh, situation happen? When does it happen? When does somebody come for a consulting? When they have some problems. They when have they have some problem statement. Correct. Okay, good. Now, so when somebody has a problem, they come to you, right? The person has to tell you that they have a problem, right? Now, just imagine a situation in which you are consulting with Mukesh Ambani. Okay? No. Look at, look at what you said. Just, just go through the process. I'm just trying to give you an example by which you will understand what is what does it take to be a consultant. Mukesh Ambani has to come to Thomas Kuruvilla and tell Thomas that Thomas, I have a problem in Geo Telecom. Even though I have set up the whole Geo Telecom, I had all the capability and and capacity to take decisions in Geo Telecom. So something is going wrong in Geo Telecom. It is because Mugesh Ambani, I have done a mistake. Listen to what is going on in the conversation between two people. Huh? I want you to think about this very carefully. So Thomas, I am Mugesh Ambani. I am responsible for Geo Telecom. I had the capacity to take all the decisions. I have a problem in Geo Telecom. And the problem is because of me, because I had I, I took all the decisions. I cannot blame anybody. I am the owner of Geo Telecom. I have enough money. I have done everything. I, I failed. And Thomas, I think you are more intelligent than me. Please help me to solve the problem. Can you imagine such a conversation? It doesn't work like that. It is not my intelligence that allows somebody like Mugesh Ambani to come and sit in a discussion and admit that he has a problem in Geo Telecom and he doesn't know how to solve it. It is not your intelligent thinking that comes in play. But at the same time, if Mugesh Ambani has to take consulting input from Thomas Kuruvilla, deep in his mind, he need to respect that I am able to give him an advice better than what he can think about. At least he should think that, right? So look at what qualities he will look look for in a consultant to come and make that admission to listen to him and then go back and correct that in geo telecom you see what i'm saying so it is it is not just about intelligence structured thinking communication and all of that it goes far far beyond those qualities to become a very very good strategy consultant yeah. so one of the questions that had come up was we usually see students that are picked even after b school students that are picked are usually students who have had a work experience the least say two years. What is your suggestion to students who are coming in as freshers or who are looking towards consulting? What are the few things that you would see and you would be like, okay, I can even give a fresher a chance or should they not at all worry about it? Or should they take an experience and then actually think about consulting? I just want your opinions about it. The way I have been speaking, let me give you an answer very clearly. The experience is completely irrelevant. Okay, let, let me explain that very carefully. And I want you to listen to that. See, first of all, when you come to an MBA course, the most experienced person will have two, three, four years of experience. Correct? Do you think that your four years experience is able to come up with a recommendation turn around Tata Airlines or Air India? Give me a break. What you need to understand is, okay, let me, let me present that slightly differently. So 
So two people, right? One person went into writing software and one person started doing marketing. Correct? There is a perception that the person who has two years of marketing experience has more chance to get into consulting than a person who did two years of software writing. I'm making that as a guess of the assumptions of the participants sitting in this session today, right? Somebody has written code for two years and he's a very good coder and somebody has done marketing and he's also good in marketing. The person who has done marketing has a better chance of coming into consulting. Completely wrong. The fact that we are looking at if somebody, both of them started fresh. One person, nobody knew coding, nobody knew marketing. If a person can become the best coder in two years time, I will make him the best consultant. If somebody started doing marketing and he did not become a good marketer, he will not be a good consultant also. Right? So the point is that in the discussions that you're having with a consulting firm, we are going to evaluate that if you have two years experience, have you gained the credibility and experience of two years of work experience? If somebody has six years experience, then we will evaluate him that, is he thinking and reflecting the six years of work experience he has? Even if he's doing coding, I will ask him, what did you learn from coding from the last six years? And if he's able to synthesize the process of coding and in six years, what did he learn from becoming a good coder or a bad coder or a program manager, I will hire him, right? See, it is like people say that, okay, uh, okay, becoming a doctor is better than becoming an economist. Somebody says that, or, or it is better to become an engineer or it's better to become an MBA instead of going to teach in a school. Do you think a bad doctor or a good teacher, which one is better? It's always a good teacher, right? So it is not about what you studied. At least I am extremely clear in my mind. I really, really don't care what is your experience. I don't care. What I care is in whatever you did, if you are good, you will be a good consultant. Doesn't mean a two-year person and a five-year person has to have the same capabilities. But I don't check whether you had two years of marketing experience or coding experience or process redesign experience. I don't care. In two years time, what have you learned? Are you good? In five years time, what have you learned? Are you good? Then I will take you to consulting. Fair point, sir. Very fair. So, so most of the times when we see uh, uh, our approach, our uh, take forward our resumes or our colleges places at some place, place our resumes, it is usually seen as the fact that what are the spikes that you have? Consulting is all about spikes. So now that you mentioned that for you, what background you come from or what kind of experience you come from until and it is a significant amount of experience, it's, it's equal to you. So what would be those spikes that you'd be attracted to or at least give a chance for an interview to an individual? What are those spikes, uh, if I may ask? I always look for students who have done a lot of variety and they're very passionate about what they have done. And that reflects in the achievements that you have, right? It doesn't mean that I will take, consider people who are poor academically because I definitely don't have any preference for a class topper or a class second topper, right? But if you're not in the top 5%, I may have an issue because maybe you did not take studies passionately. So it is not about whether you are intelligent and you got the top rank. It is more about you came to a school to study. Were you really passionate and committed towards the studies? If you're passionate and committed, you should be in the top some percentile. If you're not the class topper, I, I will never say you are not passionate. But if you are in the below the top 25%, I will start thinking, were you the most passionate person about the studies and that is why you came for an MBA program, right? And if you have, while at the same time, did you do a lot of other extracurricular activities? Were you good in some of those things? 
it doesn't matter whether you are good in debate or painting or cycling or chess or debate it doesn't matter it is just that you have to be good in few things it just see if somebody is not good very good in anything it, it is almost an indication that you are not very passionate and committed to something that's all what we are looking for if you are committed and passionate towards something you will spend time on it and if you are just an average person if you spend some time on anything you will be good in that you will be right so that's all what we are looking at in resumes it's a bit of a diversification your diverse capabilities and in some of them you should be really good because you you have been passionate about few things and and we want that passion and commitment we expect that in consulting that's it so sir one of the questions that has come up in our chat is if someone has had a bad start now i would like to believe it probably mean career the question is from mukta but has a good knowledge by the end of the course how will it affect the profile of the student so i, I am just interpreting it from my end probably meaning that had had a bad start at the b school or work wise how can they pivot it now that they think they have a good knowledge how can they pivot it in their profile show it that no i am actually capable no but what will be a reason for a bad start yeah see uh, see the problem you see is, see let us be very clear on few things here right it is very difficult for me to unless you explain to me that you had some poor uh, results and it was in spite of your passion and commitment to do well that is something that i am not able to comprehend because for us for a consulting it is very important that people are coming with a lot of commitment and passion right because see consulting if you follow through what i discussed in the beginning of the conversation consulting is more about i genuinely want to come up and help somebody to address a particular situation and i i need to be very passionate about that situation of the client i cannot be doing a job i need to be thinking about the client's problem the client has told me thomas i have this problem a geo telecom is not working i am not making money you have to be very passionate about solving the problem right and if you don't come across as a person who gets passionate about things and try to resolve things i will never bring the person into consulting so if your grades are low you have to explain to me why your grades were low you can say you may have had a, a family situation for example that's all possible so again following the same logic that i mentioned i just need to know the rational if there's no rational for your grades to be low then it's just an indication that you are not the best student that is available for me to be bringing into consulting right and on top of all of this a team play and a learning capability is very very important right see when we when we interview people for consulting i always ask at least one question by which i make the participant commit a mistake right i can ask a question normally it is a mathematical question because if it is a marketing or a strategy or a human resources it is very difficult for to say tell somebody that is right or wrong but when you ask mathematical questions you can slow, you can go through a discussion and force the person to make a mistake and the person will know that you made a mistake that is possible with finance questions or mathematical questions let me give you an input out of 100 people that i go through a process and they commit they understood that they made a mistake 70 to 80% of them will try to justify why they made the mistake 10% will will not justify why they made a mistake but they would have been happy if the question was not asked because they don't have to make a mistake right there are only 5 to 10% of the people who are happy that the question was asked i made a mistake but i got to learn something and these people normally think that i lost the job because they made a mistake but these are the people that we hire so when we go through this type of a discussion with a candidate and when we force them to make a mistake 100% of them make a mistake because i will ask them till they make a mistake and the and the and the process of deciding on whom to select 
is the way they react after they understood that they have made a mistake. And the people who are suitable for consulting are the people who people there are very rare people who actually sound very excited. Oh, Thomas, I, I think I lost the job, but I learned something new. And then they forget about the interview. They ask about that question. Thomas, can you explain to me how did you calculate the net present value, for example, right? Or how did you calculate that? How come I made that mistake? They forgot the whole interview. They are trying to learn something new that they thought they knew, right? And these are the by far the best consultants because they are very open to uh, expose their work. They are very open to learn from others. The same people who are willing to learn are never competitive and they're always willing to teach. You see? So if these people, they work in a team, the team uh, works together. They're very collaborative. They teach each other. They learn from each other. There is no ego and the outcome is amazingly good. You see, I'm explaining these real case examples so that you can start understanding what is a good consultant? What is the behavior of a good consultant? It is very contradictory to what we all generally think. We are always giving importance to uh, um, brain power. Not at all. Not at all. The best consultants are not the people with the best brain power. Yeah. I, I, I don't want to sound a bit offended. Uh, I don't want to, I normally, normally, sorry to say that, reject class toppers uh, into ADL. I don't hire them. I don't. Sir, our audience is getting motivated not to be the topper then. <laughs> <laughs> so one of the questions that has also come up, I'll also reframe it for you. Usually consultants have to deal with all sorts of problem statements in all sorts of industries. And you who is coming with a plethora of experience of almost 20, 24 odd years, if I'm not uh, wrong, you have seen the world change firsthand. You have seen e-commerce come and you have seen digitalization come and you have seen so many new things coming in in a very short period of time. How did you keep yourself updated with it? Because I personally feel that consultants have to be. Otherwise, how are you going to solve a problem? Right? So one question would be this as to how did you keep yourself updated? How can our audience learn to be updated with this ever-changing world? And uh, the other would be clearly now one person can only be very good at one thing. How is it that uh, you as a consultant deal with different problems? What do you do to make sure that you can solve all sorts of problems that come your way? How do you manage to be knowledgeable about almost everything? I will give you a, an answer that nobody is going to expect. A very, very good consultant need not be good in any topic. Okay? A very sincere consultant gets, just needs to bring in the best people to solve a problem. And that is, again, fundamentally against the thinking of a consultant because you think I know everything, which is already complete stupidity, right? So a good consultant is a person that the client will trust to bring the best knowledge, not by himself. But that keep that apart. Before getting into answering that question, if you look at the top companies in the world today, why is that new companies are much more successful than older companies? All the companies who are leaders today, Amazon, Google, all of them are new companies, not companies who have 100 years of experience like General Motors and all of them, right? If you, if you take the top 10 companies, seven or nine are, are new, new companies who have come up in the last 10 years. We are now saying that the world is disrupted in the last 10 years. That's not correct. The world is continuously getting disrupted, right? So every time you are going to look at a solution as a situation, you always, always have to think of a blank sheet of paper from which you're going to start the analysis. And why is that? I'm, I can prove it because that is the reason why new companies are more successful because the new companies always start from a white sheet of paper. 
the old companies keep editing what they are doing and sometimes and at, at, at some point in time they will definitely fail you see so the the way to look at it is your you have to actually discount your experience at least for a short period of time and look at everything very fresh for any problem any solution and if that is the case the problem of what you're saying doesn't arise right because you're not coming up with any preconceived conclusions when you look at us you're saying that let us i want to update the strategy of masters union i will not look at the current strategy and update it i will say that assume masters union was not there they are going to start the school tomorrow what will be the strategy then you look at what they have done today and then you will start correcting it right if you follow that approach you will always be looking at the, at what is happening today and what is going to happen in the future and you'll always be applying the latest knowledge into coming up with a solution you are never going to be corrupted with what happened in the past you see so that should be the philosophy all the time and it is not that the world got disrupted now the world gets is getting disrupted continuously yeah so there were many questions uh, when people were requesting you to recommend some books whether it is about consulting journey or how they can improve their journeys in order to become consultants any sorts of book recommendations that you would right there are uh, like instead of me giving a list there are many books on consulting okay let me suggest uh, one thing that you can connect to my linkedin profile uh, thomas kuruvela arthur d little if you include arthur d little in your search uh, with my name thomas kurula you will get my name and in that there is a video on consulting uh, it is around 20 minutes uh, on what is good consulting what are some of the recommended readings for consulting it is there and if you don't find what you you want just uh, send me a message on linkedin i i i will answer to every messages on linkedin and you will get a response yeah there are a lot of books there are at least 20 25 books and you cannot recommend one book it, it depends on there are books for which is very basic consulting there is for high end consulting there is for strategy consulting there is out of, there are so many books for consulting right and it it depends on exactly what you're looking for and i don't want to recommend 20 books for you to read it it depends on exactly what you want right yeah there are questions sir wherein a student who is a architecture student is asking if they can become a better manager better or i would like to believe what they were trying to ask is if they can become a management consultant and so goes for a student who is coming from a mechanical engineering background as to how can they develop skills for analysis and analytics as would be required by a consultant see first of all that a person who is a mechanical engineer or a person who is an architect i will first of all ask them why is that they want to become a management consultant right i'm sorry i'm not answering the question because again in the spirit of of the philosophy i need to understand why you are asking that question to start with because it is very wrong for people to make an assumption that a particular job is better than another job because if you again followed the initial discussion i said i had is that you have to be you have to follow a passion and you will be good in something if you are very passionate about it so if the person who is an architect is very 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 passionate about architecture he should not become a management consultant you should become a management consultant if even after working as an architect for a while you felt that i am more passionate about management consultant consultancy right because as i said a bad doctor will never be making as much money as a good economist similarly a good architect will be 100 times better than an average management consultant you see the point i i don't know who is the person but i'm just using the architect as an example to prove it is a very very important point for all of you listening to this don't make an assumption that a particular job is good versus another job please don't make that assumption it is stupid right the philosophy that all of us have to follow is that if you are an architect you should become a good architect if you are a mechanical engineer and if you can become a very very good mechanical engineer that is the best job in the world because every job if you are very good 
you will get good remunerated you will do well you will go into good positions you don't have to become a management consultant so you have to become a management consultant only if you are more passionate about being a consultant than being passionate about an architecture or a mechanical engineering job or an economist job or whatever right keep, keep that in mind right so the question should not be what should i do to become a management consultant why don't you like being an architect and then you want to become a management consultant if your skill is in, in problem solving then you follow the the topics that i mentioned to you earlier right problem solving analysis reading economics and all of that yeah so shubham here is asking as to what's the best or your favorite problem statement that you have worked on in so long i can give you a few 5 minutes maybe a bit short right i did not get into some very philosophical topics here in in consulting i will give you an example and then you will start realizing that consulting is is, is goes into much much uh, higher level right so I, uh, just to explain to you what is a bigger problem interesting problem for you to solve we all think about solving a client problem to help the client make more money correct i'll give you a very i'll try to keep it very short otherwise it will take time to explain the situation i was doing a project for a client the client is based out of saudi arabia he had a huge factory in saudi arabia we made a recommendation to shift the factory from saudi arabia to china we did the whole analysis the structured analysis we did the whole revenue everything we came up with the net present value and we concluded that if you shift the factory from saudi arabia to china the value increase is 1 billion us dollars i repeat 1 billion us dollars right i can even mention this company the company is called basama trading they control 100% of the pasta noodles tomato sauce manufacturing in saudi arabia they have 99% market share in saudi arabia right and they were manufacturing every in saudi arabia and we recommended them to shift it to uh, china and we calculated to them saying that if you shift it to uh, china you will make 1 billion dollars extra we made a presentation to the board the board did not take our recommendation i finished i came for a second meeting and i presented again to the board they did not listen to me the third time i presented they did not listen to me the son told, i i went and met the son who is a harvard mba i told him he say his name is said i said said i don't know what is going on right i have given you all the explanations why you have to shift it to china i don't know what i am going wrong i am very sincere to you as a client i am giving you my best recommendation so the the client told me thomas come to our factory at 5 o'clock in the morning so i was actually getting a bit worried i go to the 5 o'clock he's going to hit me or what like i he is he's fed up of me and he wants to hit me or something like that so i i went to at 5 o'clock in the morning to the factory there was a very old man putting oil inside the pasta mach- machine he he is opening the machine and is putting oil inside the pasta making machine and the machine is in saudi arabia in the factory he asked me thomas do you know who is that person i said i don't know how will i know 5 o'clock it is already a bit dark he said thomas that's my grandfather he started this factory 60 years back and he is the person who developed the whole thing and you are able to create 1 billion dollars because he started this factory but every day morning he treats these machines as children so thomas you tell me what will happen to him if i shift this factory to china he will die faster you see that is how far consulting goes you see the, you see the limitations of consulting we are all talking about consulting but look at how bad we have become in consulting for us everything is money so the consulting recommendation if implemented this person's grandfather will die faster because he will not go to china to oil the machine and if he doesn't wake up at 4:30 5 o'clock every day morning and machine the pasta making machines he will not be very healthy he is a very healthy person he is 89 years old now 90 years old now he is very healthy and we did not shift the factory we did not they were willing to give up a billion dollars to keep the father alive and they did not tell that to the father because the father will say i will shift it so when you talk about tough consulting projects i can give you one more quick example i was doing a project for a prince in saudi arabia he is the cousin of the king he told me thomas can you help me do a strategy for the company and his son was the ceo 
after one week, I went and told this father that there's no point doing a strategy because your son is an idiot. You should fire him. And he is married to the daughter of the king. In Saudi Arabia, you can marry your cousins, right? So the cousin of the king is my client. His son is married to the granddaughter of the king. And I had to tell him to fire him from the company because he is a disaster. There's no strategy to be developed. You just have to fire. So I'm so these are the difficult consulting decisions, right? It all depends on your, it's not about your intelligence. Where is your intelligence in this? There's no intelligence in this. It's about how passionate and committed are you towards your client? How transparent can you be? How, how much the client can trust you and you can take the liberty to tell the father that your, your son is an idiot and you have to fire him. You see what I'm saying? That is where consulting moves into. It's not about this Excel spreadsheets and structured community. It's all important. Right? Don't get me wrong. This is nothing in consulting. This is very entry level criteria, right? Yeah. I know I short the above, but one last thing. Uh, I have time, by the way. Closing note. <laughs> yeah, sure, sir. I so have one time. last question on the closing note. So mine would be, what are your expectations from the upcoming consultants? Even the consulting firms, the profession in general for the next few years. You can guide our audience for that. Your personal opinion about it. I will tell you my personal opinion, but I, I hope that people will follow that. Don't be very ambitious. Okay? Very strong statement. I know that. When you are ambitious, you are actually unhappy about what you have today. That is, you are trying to do something more than what you are. A much, much better philosophy in life is that whatever is there with you, you do it very well. I am One statement I am making, I am guaranteeing you that you will be more successful than being ambitious versus doing what comes your way. That you have to trust me. I'll explain to you why. If you are ambitious, you are doing something to prove that you can do something later. That is what you mean by ambition, right? I'm trying to do something so that I get moved to the next step. So you're not concentrating on what you're doing today. You're concentrating to move ahead. Versus if you're very committed to the job that is given to you, Nothing is distracting. You're just doing your job. People will observe that and give you more jobs. People will observe that and give you more promotions. And the growth will be much faster. And you will be much more happier if you do what is there in your plate. Versus, I don't like this. I want to become this. I'm very ambitious. I'm unhappy with my current situation. You will mess up what you're doing today. Right. So a, a simple advice is just concentrate and be very passionate and be very committed to what you're supposed to do. Everything else will automatically come to you. You don't have to go after it. I guarantee that it will come to you. Why? Because such people are rare. If such people are rare, people will come after you. You don't have to go after them. They will come after you. People will notice this. You don't have to show it to anybody. The problem is we try to show. No need. People will see this and they will promote you. They will give you more responsibilities. They will give you promotion. You don't have to ask for it. So that is my time with you, sir. And I have the privilege of having another five sessions with you. So that is the everybody's time with you to be very honest my time it still remains a bit <laughs> so it's uh, been a privilege and an honor to have uh, moderated this session with you and I, I genuinely am saying this because through this I even got a chance to go through some of your other uh, interviews and I can say this that there are very different things that you enlighten people who wish to be a part of consulting with and they are very important because there are so many of us who have no background. We just see it as something that we want and uh, you give us a better perspective towards it. So in all the words that I could say, uh, I'm genuinely very grateful and thankful. And so is Masters Union. It has been a great, great, great session. Thank you so much for your time, sir. Thanks a lot. Amazing. Thank you very much for all the questions and your participation. I do also learn a lot of things trying to answer the questions. So keep in touch. I'm available. 
on LinkedIn. And again, thank you very much for listening me out and your questions and participating. Really very good. Thank you. Thank you.